yeah so now we will start from this particular thing called performance so see every business is done with one motive that is profit and the profit can only be known if the company prepares the sopl okay if the company is in profits that shows a positive performance if the company is in uh, losses that shows a negative performance so profit is used as a measure of performance or as a basis for other measures like like eps if you check the eps of a company you come to know when compared to previous year if the eps is high this year the company has performed well that's an indication that uh, you your investment is in safe hands correct so you uh, if you want to check the performance of a company that can easily be known with by seeing the income and expenses if the company has read, uh, has kind of uh, like tried to reduce unnecessary cost that would definitely give more income to the company correct so what is income and what is expense income income is nothing but increases in economic benefits during the accounting period in the form of inflows so suppose your your companies uh, like uh, you have sold some asset of the company so you get economic you definitely get economic benefit out of that how you sold you sold 10000 dollar asset for 12000 dollars you get 2000 dollars cash inflow uh, definitely in your account so that's a economic benefit for your company correct or if i if if for some uh, point if i have to say enhancement of the assets or decrease in the liability so if the assets value increase suppose you have a revaluation surplus 10000 dollar asset now you revalued after 3 years and people are ready to pay you 15000 dollars for that asset so 5000 dollars is revaluation gain or surplus that also is the income for the company and if the liabilities are decreasing suppose you had a loan of 1 lakh and you repaid 50000 of that and now uh, like the interest what you are paying for this loan was 10% you were paying 10000 dollars for this now you are paying 5000 dollars why because you repaid 50000 of the loan amount and now the outstanding is 50000 on that 10% is 5000 so decreasing decrease in the expense also leads to increase in income okay and uh, then when your income increases that in turn increases your equity so hence all these factors increase in the value of asset decrease in the value of liability increase in equity leads to income vice versa is for expense and here there is outflow of cash so increase in liability that means you will be paying more interest leads to expense decrease in asset value that is depreciation on and all is an expense and impairment loss is an expense and all these expenses leads to decrease in equity okay so here we go and gains are nothing but the uh, income you gen revenue is nothing but it arises in the ordinary course of business activity that means on daily basis you sell goods you get revenue revenue when adjusted with all the expenses gives you profit and gain is nothing but it is something which is of non recurring nature see income is of recurring nature and uh, gains are of non recurring nature why gains happen once in a while you sold some of the assets of your company for profit you ga you got gain on that do you think this gain uh is is something which is going to recur again and again no it's just one time chance and we we saw in the case of negative goodwill even and expenses are of recurring nature routinely you spend money uh to generate revenue you have to expend money losses of non recurring nature decrease in economic benefits or impairment loss happens once in a while okay so these are the things which we have seen right now now let's go back so this all section is done
still provisions you explain no sir in the last class yeah uh, till pro no no not not till provisions i just went from here uh, to just last okay so some okay. uh, some topics here i need to explain however today i will finish this chapter it's not a problem because we are doing on skype this won't stop even if i take 2 hours there is no problem okay. now so here we did that day and this conceptual framework we were discussing correct so we discussed that this is a theoretical uh, conceptual framework is nothing but theoretical uh, like uh, see uh, theoretical aspect okay this is not something which is practical these are theoretical principles which which are used to create accounting standards which every company has to follow so that things won't go uh like there should there, there won't be any kind of errors in preparation of statements or uh, preparation of reports okay see danger of not having a conceptual framework is what there are many countries which do not have accounting which do not have a conceptual framework at all like you say african countries to some extent some underdeveloped countries like afghanistan and all do you think they have their own accounting standards or they have some conceptual framework Uh, based upon which they can prepare some standards no they don't have of course it's a accepted fact and uh, they should even like india didn't have india cut, had copied everything from united kingdom this see we were ruled by uk and uh, uh, when those were the days when we got lot of things from united kingdom we learned many things from them okay those things are helpful and handy for us right now so the danger of not having a conceptual framework is demonstrated in the way some country standards have developed over recent years standards tend to be produced in a haphazard and fire fighting approach that means most of the standards in the countries what are prepared are politically motivated in india also we have politically motivated standards you know you know the 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 icai is always back of the government for some of the other deal that means some of the other permissions and in the they want something or the other in their favor what happens they kind of prepare some standards which are kind of politically motivated for example if you if you uh, gives if you donate some money for the uh, for, like uh, to to these political parties as charity or uh, like in the sense in the sense they take chanda okay some some kind of donation they take from people wealthy people that is exempted from tax but why why question mark why by this political parties will uh, if you give donate money to them they are exempted from tax do you think this political parties have less money they are involved always in corruption and all so these are the questions we can ask but who would tend to ask all this all the political parties uh, who are uh, who are uh, like existing they would meet in the parliament there would be a debate, debate and discussion of what everyone wants the favor every political party is the same correct or wrong so these are the things uh, which uh, definitely uh, are something which are in favor of government okay so standards would also be prepared in that manner but if you have a strong conceptual framework that is not going to happen okay that means okay tax laws are different and accounting standards are different but everything have to be accounted here and conceptual framework would not allow you to make standards which would be politically motivated because the standards should be prepared uh, because the standards are prepared and the treatments are given as per the standards in the way they should happen not in the way what someone says should happen correct now so standards say that things should happen in this way this is the procedure of this part this is the procedure you should follow for this particular transaction this transaction should be dealt in this way so that 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 is based upon concepts but if someone uh, some political parties or some some government has interference in all that then definitely uh, they would interfere and make the standards in their favor so that would wo that won't work out that is happening in some of the countries now so lack of conceptual framework also means that fundamental principles are tackled more than once in different standards thereby producing contradictions and inconsistencies is big in basic concepts such as those of prudence and matching this leads to ambiguity and it affects the true and fair concept of financial reporting what is this 
See, prudence is nothing but wise. And matching is matching concept. So prudence is nothing but they'll ask you whether it is wise to do this thing or not. And matching is nothing but you need to match them at any cost. So if there is no conceptual framework, that also means that fundamental, the basic principles are tackled more than once in different standards. That means there is more ambiguity and repetitive nature of transactions or repetitive nature or repeatedly same kind of treatment would be given to different different uh, uh, like uh, see uh, for example they may give similar treatment to a particular thing that means two things two transactions would be having similar treatment then what would happen in that case there is ambiguity confusion created correct or wrong hello yes sir yeah so now so uh, to to remove those confusion and remove all that uh, it is important to have a strong conceptual framework for example i'll just explain you something okay there will be example i'll explain you that one. now another problem with lack of conceptual framework has become apparent in usa see usa they follow us gap and they follow the standards made by financial accounting standards board they don't follow the standards made by iasb international accounting standard board there is no concept of conceptual framework in united states okay so they don't follow it and it's a big problem which is which is what uh, they are facing so the large number of highly detailed standards produced by fsb has created a financial reporting environment governed by specific rules so here i would like to say fsb are the two bodies which are the preparers of accounting standards this is for united states this is for this prepares international accounting standards they are the ones who are responsible for ifrs and ias okay Generally, the IASB's uh, standards are principle based, and FASB standards are rule based. Can you give me some example of principle based and rule based system? If I am not wrong, I I have discussed this in the previous past. Can anyone come out with an example of principle based and rule based system? i'm asking to all of you can anyone give me an example of principle based system and rule based system if yes please say yes if no tell me i will explain this is terrible please open your mouths uh, please tell sir Ah, oh, that's it. Nothing, nothing to think. I will explain. See what happens in principle-based system and rule-based system. See, there is a, a like there is like thousand. There's like you bought a basket for thousand dollars. Now that basket has become a scrap. It is now hundred dollars worth. Okay. It has become a waste basket now. so what happens is now this has to be shown as a asset or a loss that has to be decided ifrs that is iasb standards and fasb standards what these guys do in in rule based system is beyond 1000 if that waste basket value if they can fetch beyond 1000 they will say it as an asset and below the below below sorry 100 dollars sorry below 100 dollars if that if the if they fetch the value of this waste basket they'll say it as a loss in ifrs they they would kind of see whether they are able to sell it in the market for 100 dollars that means if they are expecting economic benefits in the future if they expect economic benefits in the future they'll show it as an asset if they don't expect economic benefits in the future they may show it as a loss so here there is no specific rule 
they can <clears throat> they can see in the market whether they are getting good amount for this or not these guys have make things specific anything in the company less than 100 dollars is always an expense more than 100 dollars is a asset okay let me give one more example see there is a shop there is a company it's a billion dollar company it's just a small shop so they have a board outside there uh, like uh, shop okay which is very good eliminating board and they spent some ten thousand dollars for that board it's a big amount these guys also have spent like twenty thousand dollars for a board okay in front of the company this shopkeeper now the question is whether this advertisement what have been done should be shown as an expense or this advertisement board should be shown as a asset what these guys will do is for for a for us gap people they will set up a rule if they are spending more than $20000 on that advertisement board they'll say it as a asset but really thinking do you think this is a this is something which is a asset for this billion dollar company no it's peanut amount for them small amount petty amount it's an expense for them but what they can do here they can kind of make some rules if beyond 20000 they are spending and they are expecting economic benefits out of that they can show it as an a show it this board as a asset they can capitalize this correct less than 20000 they can expense it all of you please tell me are you understanding yes sir so sir. are you saying the mon rule based means which is linked with the monetary uh, rules yeah well, they just make a rule be, be, below this is an expense beyond that is an asset but these guys these guys are not following these kind of rules they they kind of show this as a expense in the pnl account advertisement if they don't expect economic benefits or no sales out of this board okay because this board would give them sales or not it's again a question mark because pro future probable economic benefits but if they get very good amount then this kind this can be used as an asset also so these are all like uh, debatable concepts okay but what i really wanted to explain to you is uh, excuse me So these guys uh, like they make specific rules and they work on that. These guys, they don't make any rules. They see whether they're going to get economic benefits out of it. Then they will categorize as an asset. If they don't, then they will not categorize. They don't make any specific rules uh, by make by like putting some ceiling amounts. OK, so that is what is more seen in the US gap. Now, last point which I was explaining to you, a conceptual framework can also bolster standard setters against political pressure. I said you, this particular international standards won't bow down to the political pressures of a country. If IFRS comes to India, they won't listen to Indian political people. That means they would only, they prepared the standards based upon the conceptual framework, not based upon political pressure. Now. Let us now discuss with what are the advantages and disadvantages of a conceptual framework. See, the advantages are the situation is avoided where standards are developed on a patchwork basis. 
see you have a conceptual framework that you can immediately take and you can find make your standards no need to make the standards uh, with with lot of interruptions pauses etc okay this 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 makes the things easier where a particular accounting problem is recognized as having emerged and resources were then channeled into standardizing accounting practice in that area that means need not wait for all the cause and effects don't see the cause and effect of things directly this is available we can make it without regard to whether the particular issue was necessarily and the most important issue remaining at that time without standardization that means there are many irrelevant things which would come into uh, uh, which will come in come in your way everything you cannot consider you cannot consider all the data for development of the standards it take lot of time for you so better if you have a conceptual framework you can make your standards with ease as stated above the development of certain standards that is particularly national standards set as i have already told you are politically motivated so this kind of things you won't expect from the if you if your country has a if if the standards are prepared based upon the strong conceptual framework now because see if the standards are politically motivated then lot of criticism would come up if things ex get exposed now some standards may concentrate on pnl whereas some may concentrate on valuation of net assets so these are some of the advantages because they are very specific you know like ias 16 international accounting standard 16 deals with property plant and equipment so they are dealing with assets now uh, revenue from contract with customers there is a separate uh, standard for that okay that would come under uh, profit or loss now disadvantages see financial instruments are intended for a variety of users of course who are the users of accounting information yes it's still hello yes sir wilson here i can't see your screen so it is still you can't see my screen that means you are having some network issue from your side maybe you no, can sir, reach and no sir the screen is still sir it's not moving like maybe i just uh, maybe you can see the advantages so if, if you end the call and rejoin it you can see the screen i did the same yeah oh. maybe you need to again do that okay sir yeah yeah you can you can okay now see uh, like financial statements are intended for a variety of users and it is not certain that a single conceptual framework can be devised which would suit all users of course see who are the users of accounting information any clue any idea i would divide Share. the users yeah please tell me shareholders yeah i will divide the i will divide the the yeah yeah internal and external yeah i would divide the users of accounting information into two parts internal and external and everyone has a different kind of requirement or expectation from the company so internal are bods the board of directors the management the employee external are shareholders like investors the same thing what we say and uh, then the uh, the customers the, the lenders yes the customers the political parties or groups the ngos the pressure groups and the government all these are the users of accounting information everyone has a different requirement correct these guys want to make company profitable they want a different kind of information they only want to see the profits nothing more than that these guys are known for decision making and making company profitable so they would also uh, like to know about the profits of the company and cost cutting employees want job security job guarantee perks and good facilities in the future that can only be expected from a profitable company shareholders want to see lot of things profitability liquidity solvency overall profitability turnover etc because these are the owners lenders solvency uh, liquidity short term liquidity turnover customers just they want to see the turnover because they want they would like to buy the products of a company which is which is good and profitable one correct and they become loyal to such company political parties look for taxes profits ngos again charity profitable company can give them government sorry this was political parties no uh, they want donations sorry uh, government taxes so 
these are the different requirements they have do you think a single conceptual framework can kind of uh, fulfill the needs of all these uh, people no no that is one of the disadvantage that means they are saying it is a broader concept and more and more things have to be included in the conceptual framework it is it is a never ending concept it seems because requirements are not still requirements may be different with the coming time correct now given the diversity of user requirements there may be need for a variety of accounting standards each produced for a different purpose this is very tedious task daunting task because the standards have to be made for 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 different different requirements so that makes the task very tough that is a disadvantage of course see every company has to produce goods they have advantages and disadvantages now you will be asking a question sir production of goods is not a disadvantage see production of single set of goods is not disadvantage but different different goods if they have to produce it's a big challenging task for them correct some disadvantages it is not clear that a conceptual framework yeah really it makes your task more easier that is not proved yet now every one of you can anyone tell me what is a gap generally no, don't tell me generally accepted accounting practices please <laughs> yes sir <laughs> what is gap see only the theoretical uh... see yeah gap is a combination of three things it is a combination of the national company law that means the company law of a nation the accounting standards and the stock exchange requirements so gap is a combination of these three in one of in any of the individual countries okay although those sources are the basis for gap of individual countries the concept also includes some non mandatory sources that is international accounting standards and statutory requirements in other countries because of the mncs which are operating in different countries so gap is a combination of all these things if you follow gap things won't go wrong that's the reason why every country follows the generally accepted accounting practices correct we have indian standards indian gap correct or wrong us gap so it's a combination of what companies law we make uh, the statements in india based upon the companies law correct the schedule 6 or something i don't i'm not into indian uh, like uh, uh, like financial statements preparation these days but when i used to like prepare when i was in college schedule 2 or schedule 3 maybe was used to deal with uh, the preparation of financial statements ifrs has no codification of all that uh, they have not codified all but they say that you have to follow this schedule to make financial statements that means some law, uh, companies law says that and statements have to be prepared accordingly based upon the companies laws uh, like rules then national accounting standards we have indias indian accounting standards we also follow sebi's guidelines correct in the same way ifrs and iasb are international accounting standards don't think think that these are uk's accounting standards no uk has their own accounting standards different accounting standards but very similar to this us has a uh, us gap so us and also this so yes then the individual countries follow their own gap principles or uh, the iis so see i will tell you first of all we are studying ifrs now what is the advantages of ifrs i will explain you right now then the question what you are asking would be clear see this is india this is china the stupid nation sure. yeah yeah yes this this these guys gave us the hell on earth now so india has indian accounting standards china has chinese accounting standards long time back what used to happen is india has companies in china china has many companies in india the mj hector and all these are chinese companies they bought uk uh, loss making companies and they converted them into profitable companies so many companies your xiaomi redmi oneplus all these realme all these are chinese guys now 
Yes. Uh, to yes. some time, some some like one year back, PUBG. Your favorite PUBG was also Chinese. Okay. Now, so if India has opened a branch in China or a subsidiary in China, China has opened a branch or subsidiary in India. The task was very tough. Some delegation or some group of accountants used to go there and learn those standards and come back. Okay, and some guys used to come here and learn the standards and go back. Why they are learning the standards of other countries? Because when other countries, uh, like of course, accountants will be appointed here. Those will be Chinese local guys, and accountants will be appointed here. Those will be Indian guys. Here, what standards are working out Chinese? Here, what standards are working out Indian? So treatment will be given as per the Chinese standards. Treatment will be given as per the Indian standards. Now, what would happen if you want to consolidate or show them as a group? This stand, this treatment, whatever has been done in Chinese standards, have to be what they have to be done. They have to be translated to Indian treatment. Correct or wrong? Yes. Yes, sir. Because yes. the company is based in India, incorporation is in India. Do you think we can follow Chinese standards? Why will we? So translation should be done, and then accordingly the matching treatment would be given. So that was a very tedious task, and you know, nationalistic. Issues. My standards are better. My standards are better. Why I should follow this? Why all these issues? So yes, what yes. happened is, and communication gap, of course. So it is like Chinese people know Mandarin, we know Hindi. We don't know Mandarin, they don't know Hindi or Telugu, whatever. Now what happens? If we know English, then what happens? the communication gap is bridged in the same way if all the countries are following ifrs the international financial reporting standards all this cost of sending delegation or accountants to other countries and learning them and all this kind of eliminated and reduced now both countries following the same standards and both countries can easily do the accounting now okay but even though nationalistic issues are there they will say why we should follow your standards our standards are only existing now i have this iasb is striving hard to educate all the countries regarding ifrs and the see when it comes to betterment when it comes to ease when it comes to uh, like a strong fundament a strong base because ifrs standards are conceptually very strong you cannot deny uh, the supremacy of the standards you need to follow so that is what it is happening many countries are following the ifrs right now they are not adopting it but they are converging with them what are they doing converging we have also converged with ifrs we are uh, the united states is is about to converge every year they are delaying it but one fine day they will come under the purview okay sir, again there is a super yes please sir who will manage ifrs uh, guidelines sir the sir, amendments are changed sir iasb the international accounting standards boards many many of the countries are members in this all of them uh, who are members would be involved in this and they would be having their own meetings and all every year debates discussions and standards are not prepared like that this is also like a political as they make laws now in india they make laws in india how it, the laws are made first some local representative will go into the parliament he will raise an issue Debate and discussion would happen, and then what would happen? The entire how the majority of the people should accept here, correct? Then yes. after the acceptance of these guys, the laws are not made. Again, that is given for public comment, like through questionnaires, through mails, through newspapers. People again, three fourth majority people again should like lot of lot of people should give their their viewpoint on that. If everything is kind of Uh, like uh, going in the favor of that particular uh, like uh, uh, like the 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 law making process then that particular thing would be made as a law or a act same thing happens here so the standards are not made like that the standards are made thoroughly the process which i explained you here all the member countries would have debate discussion corrections would happen i will explain you all the process in the second chapter in details uh debates would happen there will be fights that means uh, uh, there will be kind of fights in the sense uh sometimes disagreement on certain issues 
between the members then there is some uh, like one more uh, what we say uh, you can expect uh, you can like you can think like as a department okay that is ifrc i of ifric council one council would be there that would mm -hmm. kind of again resolve all the disputes and then finally one standard would come into picture that will again be given for public comment to various accounting firms audit firms students the the phd's the doctorates professors all would then ag agree and accept then that would become a standard like that it goes understood all of you yes sir yes sir yes, so sir. that that is why ifrs is to be followed okay so then uh, national wise standards are also there no sir i am not saying they are not there i am already i have already said many times national standards are there i am not saying yes. that you should throw them away no, no they should no, also sir, be there there but what uh, the company prefers sir see i already told you our standards have converged with ifrs do you think our standards are supreme than ifrs no so they are also not saying you follow us blindly you have some standards now but various various things like agricultural property maybe indian standards are lacking in something in that so where you lack you accept us finished okay you follow Sir, your one standards one. you follow Sir. your standards but where you lack you take our assistance see these okay. guys also want to earn money na if they collaborate yeah. they would get money in that way yeah everything is profit making business they say we are non for profit organization but do you think all these mm -hmm. non for profit are bigger 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 profit ones yeah yes <laughs> so again in india there are two different methods are come approaching uh, by the companies while preparing the financials uh, i think india c and gap both the uh, based on the applicability to prepare the financials i think sir i don't think gap gap i told you right now Achha. gap is to be followed gap is a combination of accounting standards of a country the Achha. company's law of a nation and as well as uh, the stock exchange requirements i mean say sorry this correct safety, sir for safety, example sebi sebi requirements gap is different sir gap, accounting standards come under gap ha ah, correct but while preparing the gap Yes. For example, few people are saying that is it India's balance sheet or is it GAAP balance sheet? So, sir, you are saying about US GAAP. Are you saying about? Oh no US no no, GAAP? Indian GAAP only. For example, actually, sir, how come like that? I, I told you. That's what. If uh, you yeah. read the statement. No no, if you read the statement, if you understand the statement, what uh, are you what are you seeing out of? Practical yeah, practical incident happened in 2019. I prepared the balance sheet uh, based on Indian GAAP, so which is uh, regularly fall, uh, preparing since ten years. But sir, Indian GAAP in the sense, yes, 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 I understand. If it uh, is like that, yeah, then Indian laws are followed, Indian yeah. accounting standards are followed, SEBI guidelines are followed. But Correct, to give so accounting still... treatments, you will be giving as per the accounting standards, na? Yeah. Transaction treatments. Correct. Correct, but when we submitted the uh, the Indian GAAP, we got our the regular balance sheet documents. They rejected, and they said that we need to prepare the balance sheet under India's method. What's the reason? Is the so the reporting stand? Yes, reports are to be prepared as per reporting standards. Otherwise, they won't accept it. That's understood. Yeah. Okay. Yes. The the treatment yeah, of accounting is different, but the reporting is different. Rules. But, sir gap are generally accepted accounting practices generally what is followed everywhere yes that's it but standards are to be applied for giving treatments ah i am saying that financial reporting side i am saying that sir that's what i'm saying sir if you make report you have to uh, you have to prepare as per reporting standards gap has that inclusion in it you can inclusion see gap report, signifies sir. all rules from whatever source which govern accounting Yes. that means it is a set of rules it's a dynamic concept it yes, changes sir. when the rules changes it gets it automatically gets amended if the standards get amended if the laws get amended it's a set of laws and rules that's it but yes. for accounting for preparing reports you have to follow the standards only the company's law and all i don't think that is followed only 
ए फॉर्मेट वाइज ऑल कंपनीज लॉज फॉर दैट्स इट ओके नाउ IASB is conceptual framework since i have been repeating this IASB IASB loud and clear now let us see what is the conceptual framework of this that is on what concepts the IASB uh, like like what are the concepts which are framed okay which are framed uh, like let us see what is that so what do you mean by iasb is conceptual framework what are the concepts which are framed by the iasb which they are following very simple very simple ones the first the see this book is a chapter of this book is a this book is a framework of 20 chapters correct in the same way iasb is conceptual framework is like a book for example it has these chapters the first chapter is objective of general purpose financial reporting why are you preparing the financial reports to know the profit and loss position who is the reporting entity the one pre which prepares the financial reports qualitative characteristics of useful financial information let's check that one simultaneously see the qualitative characteristics of useful financial information are the financial information should be relevant what do you mean by relevant relevant means to the point and of your usage that means if you don't consider that information that can cause you for example that means uh, if if i speak about buying a machinery of 1 lakh buying a eraser of 10 cents i forgot to account it and i accounted this one does it make any change can 10 cents bring a bring a big change for you if you record this or you don't record this it doesn't matter it's irrelevant for you but if you don't record this entry then definitely that would affect the decision making na of your use of the users of accounting statements correct or wrong yes sir is that very relevant or not yes sir it's a very relevant information so relevant information is capable of making a difference in decisions made by users it is capable of making a difference in decisions if it has predictive value confirmatory value or both that means uh, if something uh is not included or excluded or or has been or some error has been made uh, in that inclusion and that may affect the decision making then that is very relevant that shouldn't cause you that means that shouldn't cause a loss for you that is all very relevant okay next what is material material and immaterial see material information is if you omit it it would again influence the decision correct yes something which is very relevant and important for the company definitely should be recorded immaterial this eraser concept buying eraser is a material you can if you don't write it even it doesn't matter faithful representation the representation should not be in such a way which should be pro some party that means pro uh, like uh, shareholders or or pro uh, the management how see company this accountants they manipulate lot of things they kind of they kind of capitalize lot of expenses what would happen if the if the accountants capitalize lot of expenses the profit would be more the profits would be more correct yes sir yes sir so if they capitalize the profits would be high why because they are not showing the things in pnl account that means some expenses related to inventory and all they are adding to inventory actually they shouldn't do it and in some uh, some cases like in us gap they do in general uh, they use lifo method more often for valuing inventory in ifrs lifo method is banned okay that means you should not use lifo you should only use fifo so what would happen why are they using lifo method during inflationary times the cogs that means the goods which are purchasing uh, like recently or very latest goods new goods 
so last in first out na so the latest ones would be sold first correct so this cogs would be high why the cogs would be high because they, the goods would be costly because of inflation correct or wrong yes sir it, yes yeah? sir so because of this what would happen cogs would be high and the profit would be less and they can save taxes that means cash savings so these kind of manipulations they do so this uh, saving taxes and cash savings uh, th these kind of manipulations they do that is not faithful representation they shouldn't kind of to attract shareholders they are capitalizing expenses and showing more profits and to uh, sometimes they may have different motive uh, they they want to show losses much of the losses and take and claim tax benefits so that time they may expense uh, many things in p that mean they'll be showing more expenses in pnl and they'll not capitalize more of the expenses so all these things are unfaithful representation but the presentation should be faithful it should be complete no errors neutral and neutral is nothing but not in favor of someone complete yes and that means everything should be complete regarding that particular presentation or transaction and it should be free from error okay substance over form i have already explained you when i explained you the concept of leased asset comparability what is comparability the statement should be prepared in such a way that it should be easily comparable how the comparability can be di distorted disrupted see the the company should follow the accounting policies consistently then the comparability would be easier for example if in the first year we did depreciation we were following straight line method second year we follow diminishing balance method do you think the comparison is easy here and can they do that can they change the methods any one of you rajeshwari no sir they can't change sir who told you uh, okay no sir, problem but like a, i want the clarity in in my view if they like uh, follow the straight line method once in the previous year and the diminishing balance method in the next year it will be difficult to compare in the future sir but but what if a new accountant joins the company and he says that why are you following straight line method your asset is something uh, which is which is, which which for example i give you an example yes. mr a bought a car for personal use and mr b bought a car for taxi purpose and here mr a is using diminishing balance and uh, like mr b is using straight line so do you think is this justified no yes Why? no sir if no then why if yes then why sir like it's yes. according to the uh, things we use it as it's we use in the companies there like for some assets we can uh, use the straight line method and some assets no 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 it's nothing like that no so only no, one no, 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 see, see, okay okay what, what you are you're coming to the right thing only okay please go ahead for some assets we can uh, use uh, written down method according to how it's performing and according to its uh, like depreciations like for example uh, uh, they are using computers sir uh, all the computers uh, give the same depreciation every year so they can use straight line method just a second just a second just a second yeah yeah what were you saying rajeshwari so okay i'll give you an example see this taxi guy should use diminishing balance actually why because his asset would be depreciated much in the beginning actually there is a method called double declining method okay this we use in united uh, us gap actually more often so the asset would be used more by the taxi driver correct and the asset would be used yes. very less by the personal vehicle guy so here straight line is all right 
if he goes for straight line that is not justified okay so sir to uh, sorry yes sir sir to also maintain the consistency sir consistency is nothing but they shouldn't change the policies yes, see sir. if they change the policies there is no worry they can give retrospective effect yes sir yes sir correct yes sir yeah so, so i will explain you about the retrospective effect don't worry when i'll be explaining sir, like, the, the accounting principles are like falling from year to years then if they change suddenly the uh, like uh, the method from a uh, straight line method to the return down value method yes then it will so yeah i will give an example i will give an example of a retrospective effect so uh, like uh, would would be giving okay in, in the next class probably how much time did we like uh, take the class now what is the time 8:40 sir 40 almost 1 hour na or... it's showing yes, 30 sir, minutes only so ah okay okay no problem see do do you know anything about the retrospective effect no sir okay no. let's go ahead see this is an important concept retrospective effect please understand this see see this is a company which has been following straight line method just just wait for a second Sir, is retrospective like a sudden change, sir? uh no retrospective is not that retrospective i will explain you i'm giving an example for that okay just just a, this uh, book is not coming up actually this fed up with the laptop also lot of data in this a big time waste stop loading you know so install ssd sir i i i will i will i will install that immediately 
I thought of installing that. My laptop has very good configuration, but it, it's like very, it's, it has gone very slow in performance. Take like 850, sir, because. Which one? 550 or 850 SSD, sir. How much is the cost of that? It will be like around 2500 to 3000. Mm, yes, 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 yes. It's a good thing. I, I really, I heard about it. Yeah. So retrospective effect. Understand this concept. What is this retrospective effect all about? Suppose company has bought a machinery of 1 lakh using straight line method, diminishing balance method. They want to change into diminishing balance. Okay. So, for, so rate depreciation is at the rate of 10%. Here also depreciation at the rate of 10%. So first year 10,000 removed. It is coming to 90,000. Here also 10,000 removed in the first year. It's coming to 90,000. Second year, what happens here? 10,000 again, and the asset is of 80,000, the carrying value, and the here 9,000 because 10% now on the return on value will take. So it is like 81,000. So what happens in the second year is you have to give retrospective effect if you want to change from straight line to diminishing balance, right? All of you. Yes, sir. So retained earnings had a balance of 50,000. Okay. So what has happened is you removed how much out of it? This is uh, the profit before depreciation. Now, after profit after depreciation is how much? 50. Here it should be how much? Suppose it is 50. And if you remove 9,000, how much it should be? 41. 41. So what you should do is, you should add this 1,000 as changes in accounting policy. So what would happen? It will become how much? Yes. Please, please tell me how much? 41,000. 41,000. So you should give a disclosure of this in the footnotes. Again, let us go for third year. Third year again here, 10,000 removed. 70. Again here, uh, like how much? 8,100. Can you tell me how much is the difference? Hello? Hello. 72,900. So how much additional? 2,900, correct? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if you would have removed 10,000, after depreciation, your profit would have been 31,000. Nah? So how much your profit should be if you remove 8,100? How much? Please let me know. 32,900. Huh? 32, so that the difference amount you should add it here. Okay. To make it 32,900. That means giving a retrospective effect is nothing but giving a retrospective effect is nothing but as per diminishing balance, how much it would have been that you should ensure or you should change the values to those values which would have been if you if you would have used the diminishing balance method since the beginning that is what is retrospective effect it means the values what you got because of straight line method you should change them in such a way as you have used diminishing balance method since the beginning that is retrospective effect you can't give all this treatment in the pnl in the in the pnl account or sopl only you should give that treatment to the retained earnings in what? In statement of changes in equity section. That and once you do that, the accountant who would join the company or any new any anyone who is having knowledge of all this would understand that company has done changes in accounting policy. Okay. And then disclosure should be given in the footnotes. Anyone has got any doubts, please ask me. 
So last year balance sheet, do we require to modify in this approach? Yes, yes, yes. Every year, last five is if you are using the asset since last five years, you should yes. modify it as per the diminishing balance. Yes. As if, as if you were using diminishing balance. Yes. Meghna, did you understand? No. Yes, sir. No. Yes. Yes, sir. I understood. Like you need to. Uh, change as per the diminishing balance. The difference amount mm -hmm. what was getting created, you need to add back. That's it. Yeah. If okay. if you would have used diminishing, then you need to. You would have then. Then what? You are changing from straight line to diminishing balance. Since the depreciation okay. is less here, you'll add back. If you would have used diminishing, then you would have what? Subtract. Um, Why? See here, what is the depreciation? Ten thousand. So your profit is actually forty thousand as per the straight line, na? As per yes, diminishing, sir. it is forty one thousand. You added. Yes, if you would have used diminishing yeah. here, it would have been how much here? Forty one thousand. Ah, so you would have subtracted thousand to make it forty. Finished. Okay. Okay. Yes. So all of you. It's not thirty-two. It's almost one hour plus. We have taken. That's not oh. a problem. So we will continue the class on Monday. Okay. That means Monday collectively, first and second chapter both we will try to finish. Okay, sir. On Skype, fine. Ah, uh, Skype, sir, better. Yeah. Okay, All of you. Good bye night, bye. Night. Thank you. So the videos on these are recorded. It will be there itself. It will be there itself in this. And all the previous videos I will today send on your mail. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rajeshwar, I'll call it ten minutes. Okay, I'll call it. Yeah. Hello. 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 Ah, sir. Ah, sir. Yes.